So we've talked about what value is, and we've talked about this idea of benefit. We've talked about the kinds of utility that we create. Um, we had talked in our naive definition about it's all about buying and selling stuff. So in order to buy and sell stuff, you need to make an exchange. And basically, if you have a need, there are three ways to satisfy it. You can make it yourself, you can steal it, or you can buy it. Okay? Marketing only happens, or an exchange only happens, when you buy it. If you make it yourself, if you're self-sufficient, there is no commerce. Um, if you're stealing it, there is no commerce. That's called theft. Um, and if you buy it, then there is an exchange, and an exchange occurs in transactions. A transaction is the unit of exchange. Um, so one of the things about the idea of an exchange is that transactions are not independent of each other. First, in the real world, there are very, very few situations where I will have just one transaction with a customer. Right? Anybody here go to Starbucks? Anybody here went to Starbucks just once? Yeah, I'm a secret shopper for Pete's. <laughs> Um, so I go to Starbucks a lot of times, so when I make a purchase at a Starbucks, that is influenced by my past experiences with Starbucks, right? And anticipation of future experiences with Starbucks. And um, the Starbucks folks know about it. In fact, when there is only a one-time transaction those are the situations that are most likely to lead to unethical behavior or at least perceptions of unethical behavior. What are some of the, the stereotypes of unethical business people? I have here an example. Um, anybody bought a used car? Okay. Um, did you buy, uh, how many used cars have you bought? A lot. Do you buy them from the same people? Are, are you like a dealer? Do you buy and sell used cars? Okay, so you know what, I, you're know what I'm talking about. When you're selling a car, the customer doesn't know what you paid for it, right? No. And that's kind of the whole point, right? Yeah. <laughs> I got a big smile there. <laughs> yep, that's called a knowledge differential. Um, and again, is it, uh, is it common to have repeat business or is it usually one-off? It's usually one-off. It's usually one-off because it's, you know, it's just that's the way of the business. So what's your incentive to treat a customer fairly? Your incentive is to get what you want. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So when I go into a Starbucks, if I'm unhappy with my Starbucks coffee, I say, I'm unhappy with my Starbucks coffee, what are they going to say? I'm sorry, let me fix that for you. Okay. If I have a problem with your car, you're going to say, prove it. <laughs> you know, you had three days to, <laughs> right? Again, because in Starbucks, even though I might lose money on a transaction, I'm willing to do that because the relationship is more important than any individual transaction, which leads to an important element of exchange, and again with marketing today, is we're not really talking about a transaction-related business, we're talking about customer relationships. Um, and there's a concept we, we, we talk about called lifetime value of a customer. So we know just through research, for example, that if you go to a Starbucks, you are likely to be a Starbucks customer for five to seven years, and that you will be going to Starbucks three or four times a week. So if I'm making a buck off of every cup of coffee that you order, I have an expectation of how much that's going to mean over the life of our relationship. So it's really smart for me to take a $1 loss in order to maintain the value of that $1,500 relationship, right? But in a used car situation, I don't have that expectation of future benefits, so this is the deal, and I need to make my money on this transaction or I'm not going to make money. And you would never intentionally lose money on a transaction, right? Because that's just not smart business. So again, that's the point, is because one-off transactions don't have an expectation of a relationship, they're much more likely to either uh, have unethical behavior or create perceptions of unethical behavior um, I, I, one of my other favorite examples, I, I just when I was in furniture, um, was I, I learned this while I was there, is in the carpet business. And in the carpet business, 
Um, people generally shop, shop for carpet, um, say, once every seven years. And when people decide to shop for carpet, they spend about 30 days in the search process before they actually buy. Which is why, if you've ever driven by a carpet store, you might see a huge sign in the window that's kind of old and wrinkled and yellowed that might say something like going out of business. <laughs> or it might say, you know, sale 30% off this week only. Um, because for all of the times that you weren't looking for carpet, you might have driven by that place and not even noticed it. But once you're in the market for carpet, you're paying attention. Oh, wow, they're going out of business. There might be some bargains. Or, oh, wow, there's a sale on there. Um, again, the, the, it, it, whether there's a relationship or not is an important element of business. Okay, so if I was to give you a multiple choice test uh, that had the question, what is an exchange on it? These might be some of the things that we would look at. Um, in order for an exchange to happen, there needs to be two or more parties. You cannot exchange with yourself. Um, each side has to have something of value. Why would you exchange something that you don't get any benefit out of it? Um, and this is where the, the idea of perceived value is important because even though products may be identical, two people might have different perceptions of the value of those product, and that kind of links into the economic concept of diminishing returns. If I have a million dollars, but I don't have any ice cream cones, um, I might be willing to pay a good chunk of money for an ice cream cone. If I have 100 ice cream cones and no money, I would be more than happy to exchange one of my ice cream cones for some money. Um, so because there's a perceived difference in the value of the same object, we can make exchanges. And this is where win-win exchanges come from, is the idea is different people have different perceptions of value for the same product, and you want to use that transaction to transfer some of the value from one person to the other person, and the net result is two happy people. Uh, it, would, it, it, it would make sense that it, there has to be a means of communication, because how can I tell you how great my product is compared to what you're offering me in exchange if we can't communicate with each other? Participation has to be voluntary. Otherwise, it's called theft or taxes. <laughs> um, sorry, didn't mean that. Um, and it needs to be appropriate to deal with the other party. Um, for example, Anybody ever wore a red shirt into Target or a orange shirt into Home Depot? What happens? You get asked questions, right? Did you ever tell them, well, this is on sale, buy one, get one free? <laughs> Go ask the manager. <laughs> because, yeah, just because I'm wearing an orange shirt doesn't mean that I have the authority to make deals. Um, more realistically, for example, when it comes to legal contracts, um, some minors uh, who are not of legal age aren't able to engage in contracts. So if a 12-year-old buys a car and signs a finance contract, you know, I don't care if, it were there, if there's no cooling off period, that was an un invalid transaction because a 12-year-old can't, can't sign a finance contract. And then the last concept that we want to talk about in, in the marketing definition is the idea of stakeholders. This is a relatively new, relatively saying, the last 30, 40 years. Um, and the idea of a stakeholder is marketing affects more than just the buyer and the seller of the product. There's a whole ecosystem around business. And in order to be sustainable, and sustainable is one of those words that has lots of meanings. In this context, I'm talking about the ability to keep the doors open day after day and have profits. Um, all of the stakeholders need to be considered, uh, should benefit, or at least not be harmed. So obviously, stakeholders are the company and the customer, because without customers, we have no business, right? But without happy employees, we're not going to have products to sell to our customers, so maybe we need to keep the employees happy, right? And then if I don't have suppliers that are willing to supply me the raw materials for my product, I can't make products that make customers happy, so I probably need to have um, suppliers that are taken care of. Um, and then we can talk about it's really easy to do business where the rule of law is in place. So it might be important to have a healthy government, a healthy uh, community around me. 
um, uh, shareholders need to be taken care of. Um, and this is, I think Milton Friedman is uh, one of the big excuses for unethical business behavior has traditionally been the concept that the role of management is to create value for the shareholders. Anybody heard that one? Which is true. Uh, but again, shareholders are only one of the stakeholders in the company. If you have rich shareholders, but the employees um, are uh, not getting paid enough that they're going to stay on the job, and you can't get suppliers, and you can't get products, and your customers don't like the crap that you're turning out, um, you're really not going to be able to return benefits to the stockholders because the ecosystem isn't there. And then ultimately, it doesn't help us if we can't breathe the air or drink the water. Um, you know, we're making a lot of good news is we're making a lot of a lot of money. Bad news is we're dying. So uh, spend it now. Yes. <laughs> so a stakeholder is uh, the best definition of a stakeholder that I've had is if there's a conversation, they should have a seat at the table. They may or may not have an ownership stake in the company. They may or may not have any official relationship with the company, but they're affected by what the company does. A shareholder is somebody that has an ownership stake in the company. Okay, so they're very. I have made, I have invested financial resources into the company, and I have a piece of ownership. I have a say in how the company is run, um, that kind of thing. So, share, stakeholders is much bigger than a shareholder. Shareholder is one kind of a stakeholder. And the point that I'm trying to make is traditionally in, in economics, the thought has been that the only stakeholder that matters are the shareholders. And what we're recognizing is that in order for the shareholders to be taken care of, customers need to be taken care of, employees need to be taken care of, there needs to be a healthy government, needs to be a healthy environment. Um, you know what I mean? Everybody needs to be taken care of, otherwise the business is going to fail. Yes? When did you start implementing this like Say again? When did you start implementing this theory? When do we start implementing this theory? That's a great question. Good businesses have always been doing this. Um, and it's only in recent years that people started putting a name to it. <laughs> um, it I had, a, I had a, a, when I was getting my MBA many, many years ago, I had a, a interview with a CEO of a, uh, of a local company that I was working with, and at that time, uh, the key, the hot word around there was strategic planning. Everything was strategic planning. Got to do a strategic plan, five-year plan, ten-year plan. And, you know, we're talking to him, and he says, yeah, strategic planning, that's the latest buzzword, is basically everybody's looking for attention. <laughs> Um, we'll call it something different 10 years from now. Um, so yeah, it is good, good business is really based on understanding how people work. Um, and this is why marketing is so important, because that's what marketing is all about, understanding what people want and giving them what they want. Um, and you get into economics. You've had uh, Economics 101 and 102. Uh, did they talk about the idea of rent seeking? Rent seeking is where you try to get an advantage or above and beyond what the expectation of your contribution is. It's that rent seeking where people try to get a bigger piece of the pie than they deserve that leads to a lot of the perceived problems that we have in business. But solid businesses have always understood that you know, happy customers, happy employees, happy investors, um, happy government means happy business. I should, at this point, make a disclaimer. <laughs> uh, much of what we talk about in this class has been widely researched and well understood. Um, a lot of what we talk about in this class is my perception of the world. Um, and I'll try to be clear when I'm talking about my perception of the world and what has been widely established by fact. That's my perception of the world. Um, I find that a lot of times I'm right, but some of the times I'm not right, and you are free to disagree with me. Um, and I would love the discussion if you do. Um, I'm not only, I, you know, I have the microphone and, and I'm in the front of the room, so I'm probably going to win, but let's have the discussion anyway. Because <laughs> I don't like looking foolish. 